One of the more iconic Cavalier poets is Richard Lovelace. He was a uh, very emphatic courtier uh, and fan of Charles I. He was a uh, he was from a distinguished family. He was born fairly wealthy and well to do. Uh, and his uh, emphasis on his uh, uh, support for uh, for Charles got him into some trouble over over the years. And notably, he went to prison several times and uh, never stopped uh, insisting on the glory of the uh, of the regime. And ultimately, he died penniless. Uh, because of it, as the run-up to the English Civil Wars um, quickened, let's say. And one of his more interesting poems that I find is, uh, is a short, he, he, he doesn't have a particularly broad base of, uh, of work, but one of, the, one of his more interesting ones, I think, is a short lyric, To La Costa Going to the Wars where he demonstrates a surprising subtlety in his, uh, in his poetic meter. Uh, Tell me not, sweet, I am unkind, that from the nunnery of thy chaste breast and quiet mind to war and arms I fly. True, a new mistress now I chase, the first foe in the field, and with a stronger faith embrace a sword, a horse, a shield. Yet this inconstancy is such as you too shall adore. I could not love thee, dear, so much, loved I not honor more. Now, it, it on the one hand, it is a... Uh, a, a kind of a love lyric. He is saying goodbye to his love uh, named Lucasta. Most uh, scholars uh, tend to suggest that this is based on or inspired by uh, uh, his, his uh, a great love of his whose name was Lucy. Lucy significantly meaning light. Lucasta is a uh, is a Romanized version of that, a Latinized version of that, a uh, classicized version of that. So, uh, so it is not uh, bereft of its biographical content. Lovelace did go to war several times. He would have had to leave his beloved uh, in those instances. And uh, this is him saying goodbye, but uh, trying to soften the blow by saying, you know, uh, I'm, I'm only doing this because of my great honor, because of the worthiness of the cause, because of my dedication to His Exalted Highness, His Majesty, King Charles I. And this is also significantly, politically, his way of signaling to Charles I that he is very willing to say goodbye to all worldly delights in for the honor of defending royal privilege. And uh, there is that. But the poem itself, I think, is working on a couple of different things that are that are interesting within the tradition of Cavalier poetry and working even sometimes against that tradition. For one thing, it is a very simple little lyric, almost insignificant in its form. A very simple rhyme scheme, A, B, A, A, A B, A, B. Changing each, uh, each stanza, it is very short. The lines are fairly simple. Uh, and, and it's not jostling around with too much uh, philosophical complexity that the, uh, the metaphysicals, let's say, uh, uh, were drawn to. This is, on the surface of it, a really fairly straightforward lyric. Tell me not, sweet I am unkind, that from the nunnery of thy chaste breast and quiet mind, to war and arms I fly. Noble sounding. Uh, significant and saying, you know, don't blame me for heading off to do my duty. Uh, in order for me to do that duty, I need to leave my worshipful 
uh, attendance upon you. And you get that worshipful sense uh, in, a, in a kind of a, the courtly tradition, honestly, of uh, referring to the woman in, in a kind of religious tone, that from the nunnery of thy chaste breast and quiet mind. That is just loaded down with the exalted regard for womanhood that uh, that marks particularly the uh, the early Renaissance poets and here he is very much working in that tradition and uh, the the first thing that I think you have to notice however is that parentheses around sweet. It appears in the first line, beginnings and endings, always significant. So it appears in that first line, parentheses, and then again in the last stanza, beginnings and endings. I could not love thee, dear, so much. Parentheses. Why? That's curious. What is the effect of the parentheses? What do they do? Well, they create a kind of uh, a second register for the poem, if you will, a, uh, a sotto voce, a dropping of the, uh, the voice, and almost a whisper, perhaps. And within the broader poem, that's sort of interesting, because the poem does seem to be very high flown in its tone to wars and to war and arms i fly that inverted syntax is uh, is very formal and very elevated and very noble and heroic and all of that but the uh the curiosity of sweep in parentheses is, is a little bit of a deviation from that so you get the sense Perhaps the poem is, or the poetic speaker, is trying to have it both ways. Trying to say, no, no, dear, I have to go. My duty is elsewhere. I need to go defend the right honor of the king. And at the same time, maybe, maybe he is uh, looking to get a little parting gift, let's say and saying, you know, no, 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 I have to do this, but if you really want to have a few minutes before I go, before I, you know, get on my horse and ride off, maybe we can go slip off behind the barn. The, uh, the, the curiosity of that contra contrast is, uh, I, I, I think, significant. And, and it's ultimately kind of humanizing, and it starts to take this very noble, duty-bound poem and push it more into a carpe diem, let's just have some fun while we're here mode. Now, basically, both those ideas are consistent within the cavalier tradition. They, uh, they are, uh, the cavalier tradition is ultimately a, um, a, a conservative tradition, a, uh, a tradition that honors pleasure, that honors worldly, physical pleasure, but also one that hews very closely to, let's say, the Roman ideals. And that Roman ideal of Duty is very prominent in this poem. Think of the uh, think of the Aeneid, for God's sakes, the Roman ideal of duty, and that that the, those two elements are very much at play here, where it is about devotion to this notion of honor. Last line in there, honor. Is, in, is, is encapsulating for this, uh, for this speaker, but it is held in twin suspense, I would say, both uh, in opposition to and in some confluence with the idea of love, love and honor, both significantly, specifically referenced in that last line, loved I not honor more, love and honor. So these two elements are bubbling along, intertwining this, uh, this poem in a way that is really very rich, that is very significant. And the, 
the curiosity of the noble ideal of honor, along with the much more earthy uh, physicality, let's say, of love, I think is played throughout. In that second stanza, true, a new mistress, now I chase the first foe in the field, and with a stronger faith embrace a sword, a horse, a shield. Now, Significantly, you got a lot of F's in there, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of alliteration. First foe in the field and faith, uh, th that's kind of tripping over one another. And, and, and whenever you see something very conspicuous like that, you got to lean in a little and pay a little bit more attention to uh, the words on the page, I would say. And so, with a stronger faith embrace, a sword, a horse, a shield, well, let's look at those three items. A sword, eh, kind of phallic, quite frankly. A horse, always a symbol of passion, um, a kind of masculine passion at that. And a shield. Uh, a shield could be this woman's... Um, well, chastity, her chaste breast has been holding him back. And now perhaps he is uh, embracing this idea, you know, and with a stronger faith by demonstrating my faith to honor uh, uh, and, and to my fealty to the king through my willingness to participate in his war, Perhaps now this will redound to uh, my attractiveness to you, your willingness for me in a sexual context to exercise my sword and my horsey passions and for you to perhaps drop your shield. Maybe I'm going a little too deep into that. I don't know. I don't think so. I think there's something there. Yet this inconstancy is such as you too shall adore. I could not love thee, dear, so much loved I not honor more. So the idea also, and this is very Renaissance, that by participating in the war, he is in fact uh, making himself better for her. He is participating in something noble, something honorable as the war, and so improving himself by sharing something of the divine spirit of honor, he is improving himself as a uh, as a an offering to her. He is burnishing his credentials as a lover by being a fighter as well. And all of this is going on in a very simple little rhyme, a very simple little uh, lyric, almost a ditty. Very basic, like I said, very basic rhyme scheme, very basic styling, very basic meter. But the ideas that it is toying with uh, I, I think are very subtle. They are all centered around the idea of uh, pleasure, I, uh, in in one way or the other. Pleasure of the uh, pleasure of the the enjoyment of the higher things like honor, and also an appreciation of love as an avenue to or concordance of those higher things like honor. So you get the uh, the interweaving of uh, the, the physical pleasure and the mental and spiritual pleasure as one. And this is, uh, this is in many ways the heart of the Cavalier tradition.